Hello and welcome back to another episode of Tash Teaches. I'm Tash and in today's video I'd like to walk you through how I set up VCVRAC and Bitwig to talk to each other so that I can send both audio and MIDI back and forth. Now the advantages of this are we can use Bitwig's interface to sequence things in VCVRAC that might otherwise be a bit more complicated to do or we can also use some of the insane modules in VCVRAC to trigger instruments in Bitwig and then have the more hands-on control of shaping and recording and arranging the madness. So without further ado, let's jump right in and I'm going to show you how to get it set up. The first thing we need to do is download VCV Rack and Black Hole by Existential Audio. This is a virtual audio driver that's going to allow us to send audio back and forth between VCV and Bitwig without adding any additional latency, which is pretty cool. Um, Go ahead and install that like you would any other and let's imagine that this has just been installed. Next up we're going to go to the audio MIDI setup and you should now see Black Hole 16 channel has been added as an audio device on the left here. Let's go to the output tab and we're just going to bring the overall volume down by minus 12 dBs. Um, that just gives us enough headroom so that we don't end up with this bizarre feedback problem that sometimes happens when you're feeding too much audio into it. Next up, we need to find a way to be able to use our audio interface, in my case the Claret 4 Pre USB, alongside Black Hole's 16 channels. And the way that we do this is by creating an aggregate device. And what an aggregate device is, is it fuses together as many of these inputs and outputs as you'd like to create a sort of mega sound card. So I could pick my audio interface and the inputs and outputs are listed below, but if I wanted to I could now add black hole to it as well. So now I have a 34 in 24 out aggregate device. I could even add my ES8 and have like a few more. And there we go, we start creating these large devices that we can then select instead of our sound card. And that will then be our audio interface. So I'm just going to remove ES8 for now and let's have a look to see what we've got here. We've got my 18 inputs on the sound card and then we've got the 16 inputs on the black hole. And we've got the eight outputs of the sound card and the 16 outputs of black hole. Now you could rename this and call this VCV Bitwig or whatever the hell you decide to call it. Um, let's go to Bitwig now. So let's open it up and we now need to select this new aggregate device we've selected, VCV Bitwig, as our input and output. And upon selecting it, you'll see that we have no inputs or outputs. And this is really quite irritating, but it's just a necessary evil of setting this up. Once you've done it once, you never have to do it again. We're going to need to manually configure all of the inputs and outputs here. Now, this is personal preference, but I think possibly the easiest way of doing this is by unselecting them again and selecting black hole first and then selecting your sound card. And this sorts out the issue of... Um, the black hole inputs and outputs starting at like number 27. Let's go back now to Bitwig and we know that the inputs and the outputs are the first 16. That's a uh, black hole. So you're going to add 16 mono inputs. I'm not going to do the whole way but imagine you've now added from 1 to 16 and let's call them black hole um, and then I would do a space command A command C and now this means that I can just highlight back from the numbers and I would go down and name all 16. So I have black hole 1 to 16. Next up, we then need to do the stereo pairs. So we may have 16 mono outputs, but we have 8 stereo pairs. So 1 and 2, 3 and 4. So once we've got the 16 here, we can then go in and add 1 and 2, 3 and 4, 5 and 6. And you're going to do your... Um, Let's just call that black hole 6. You're going to do the pairs again. So that will be black hole 1 and 2. That will be black hole 3 and 4 and so on. If you wanted to add your sound card inputs as well, then they would be from 17 onwards. So the two inputs or the four inputs on the front of my sound card are 17, 18, 19 and 20 respectively. Next up, we're going to do the outputs. So you can do exactly the same thing. Add 16 monos and again, call them black hole 1 all the way down to two uh, to 16. Then you're going to add your stereo pairs again, um, all eight of them. So black hole 1 and 2. And now the last important thing is that your sound card speakers are usually 1 and 2 output. Um, but now because we've changed it around, my speakers, i.e. the first two outputs of my sound card, are 17 and 18. 
So I just need to add here, not as an output, but as speakers, 17 and 18. Those are my iLoud micro monitors. Fantastic. So I now have my speaker set up. Now, once you've done this and you've done all 16 mono inputs and mono outputs and the two sets of eight stereo pairs, I'm going to go now over to my actual aggregate device, which is this My Studio one. And you should now see I've also got the um, additional inputs and outputs of my Expert Sleepers ES8, which is my Eurorack module that allows me to uh, have Bitwig and everything, you know, communicate. Let's go back over to Bitwig again. You can see that I've got all of the 16 mono inputs and the eight mono or the stereo pairs on both the inputs and the outputs. Fantastic. This means that we are now officially set up to send audio back and forth between VCV and Bitwig. Let's now configure the audio in VCV rack. So if you add now an audio 16, we can select as the device, leave core audio the same, the device can now be selected as existential audio black hole 16 channel. It's now illuminated in green to indicate that there is a connection made. So let's first of all send some audio from VCV rack into Bitwig now. If I take a Platz oscillator, just get something nice and simple. I'm going to make it not so abrasive. And if I patch the output of that into, say, input one now, where it says to device and from device, we could substitute that to be to Bitwig and from Bitwig. So if I now make an audio channel and select the input as black hole one and record enable it, we can now hear this macro oscillator. Brilliant. Now, what if we wanted to send audio the other way? What if we wanted to have, say, a top loop in Bitwig be sent in to uh, VCV rack? So I'm going to take a scope so we can visualize it when it goes in. Um, I'm going to now take this loop, press play, we can hear it in Bitwig. But if I change its output now to be, say, black hole one, and we take from Bitwig output one into this scope, voila, we can see the loop. Look at that, it's coming nicely on the scope. Now, it's less useful, I think, sending audio to VCV rack than it is the other way, but one great use for this is then having the audio come back again. So let's say we are gonna keep this going into the master channel. What we could do is, let's disconnect that. Why don't we set up an effect in VCV rack as a send in Bitwig? So let's add a new send channel and we're gonna take the hardware effects. And we can now select, because this is a stereo loop, let's pick uh, black hole one and two as our output and we'll do black hole three and four as our return port. So if I now add an effect, I'm gonna use the plateau reverb, which I really like. I'm going to take from Bitwig, one and two as the input. And then I'm going to take from Plateau back into three and four as our output. I'm gonna make this totally wet, so no dry, full wet. And if I now listen to this loop, I can send it into the Plateau. And I can change things here. Really cool. And I can dial in how much I send to it, of course. So that's how we send audio from Bitwig and to Bitwig. In order to send MIDI back and forth between Bitwig and VCV, we're going to have to go back to our audio MIDI setup one more time. If you then go to Window at the top and then Show MIDI Studio or press Command 2, we're going to double click on the IAC driver and turn it online with this little checkbox. It should now be illuminated and we can go to the ports section and we're going to add another bus. We'll take a second to load and there we go. And we're just going to rename these Bitwig to VCV and you guessed it, VCV to Bitwig. We can then click apply and we can officially now quit Audio MIDI Studio. Now I'm going to quit Bitwig and open it again just so that the name changes that we've just done take effect. 
Let's load that up again. Get rid of this plat mo uh, the plateau module. Cool. So let's go back to our settings now. And under synchronization, we should now have the IAC driver for Bitwig and VCV and the IAC driver for VCV to Bitwig. And we're going to click on for the clock. And then we're going to go to the controller section where we're now going to add a controller. And there's now generic MIDI keyboard add. And we're going to pick for the MIDI um, control for it to be the IAC driver VCV to Bitwig. And this will just mean that when VCV is playing things, Bitwig is interpreting it as somebody just playing a MIDI keyboard. Let's close that up now. And we are now ready to rock and roll. So why don't we try, first of all, to trigger a Platts module from within Bitwig. So I'm going to take a Platts. The reason I'm using Platts in these is just because they've got an inbuilt... Um, envelope and it just makes it less patching time. So let's first of all uh, figure out how we're going to trigger this from within Bitwig. Well rather nicely because we've added those IAC drivers all we need to do is add a hardware instrument. Quite like we did with the hardware effects we can now just choose the correct inputs and outputs and connect the two. So let's select the MIDI as driver Bitwig to VCV. We can leave it on channel 1 that's fine. And then let's choose a return channel, which is basically we're going to send the MIDI out of Bitwig. It's going to affect something in here, and then the audio is going to come back in on what number? So I'm going to select black hole 1, and if I patch the output in, there we go, we can hear it. But I don't want it to be just playing continuously. So I'm going to, first of all, um, set up a way to, to trigger this instrument from over here. And we've now got the information being sent out to the IAC driver, but we need to collect it or we need to meet it halfway now in VCV rack and then have it control this plats and then send the audio back in. So let's take a MIDI to CV device. And when you think about it, it's taking MIDI out of here sending it via the IAC driver, which then the IAC driver is collecting here, converting it into a control voltage that's then controlling this oscillator and then sending the audio back in, just in this nice neat package here. All we have to do is change the device of this MIDI to CV to be driver Bitwig to VCV, just the same as we have here. Channel 1, just the same as we have here. And now we can patch in the gate and the pitch and if we take the output of that back into input 1 now, and we play something on the keyboard in Bitwig, we have full control of the synth. And even if we were to then, say, draw in um, some notes in a clip, what's lovely is we can now have that playing in Bitwig, but be tweaking in real time. I've created a really simple patch here with a marbles device creating some random gates and some random pitches on this Platts module that we then have coming onto an audio channel with the input as black hole one. So if I unmute that, we can hear what's coming through. Wonderful. The only issue is we are still hearing VCV rack even when paused in Bitwig. And also if I were to play with a metronome, we're totally out of time. There's just a, there's no communication between Bitwig and VCV rack about tempo. So quite like we did with setting up how to play an instrument from Bitwig, we're going to now set up a clock. And I'm going to take a, another hardware instrument. And I usually leave channel 1 as my clock. So before we had that instrument playing, I would have usually set instruments from being channel 2 onwards. So let's leave channel 1, and we'll do Bitwig to VCV. And we don't need a return, because this time we're just sending the clock, and we don't necessarily need it to return any audio to us. So leave it as is. And now I'm going to make a little MIDI clip here of just straight 16th notes. And just make sure that they don't touch, because otherwise they then become one long mega gate. So now we've got this silent 16th note MIDI pattern and it's being sent out on channel 1 of the Bitwig to VCV driver. So let's do just what we did before and take the MIDI to CV and I'm going to select my Bitwig to VCV and channel 1, that's fine. And if we unmute this now and I pause it, 
As soon as I connect the gate output or the, as soon as I connect this clip via the gate output into the clock input of this gate, of this marbles. Oh, I'm on the, going, going the wrong way, sorry. MIDI to CV. There we go. Bitwig uh, number one. As soon as I connect this gate output to the clock input, boom, it pauses. And if I were to now press play, and if we were to maybe just put this on straight 16th notes, you'll now notice that if I were to, um, what was that going into? Oh, pitch. I can now play with the metronome and it's perfectly in time. Wonderful. So we've now got a clock source going in. And what I will usually do as well is I'll have this as my clock up here and I'll just label it to make sure that I don't fuck with it. And I'll just put, say, uh, clock from Bitwig. And I'll just leave that up here in the top left hand corner of my template. And I'll also have this as clock set up in my template. I'll make it white. And this will just play here rather than on the arranger view. So I can be doing whatever I want, making a nice song here, but the clock will just be continuously playing. And any other devices that I use in VCV Rack, like say, let's take the note seek, um, I'll use the same clock input from here. So everything inside VCV Rack is being controlled time-wise by the gate output that's coming from Bitwig. Now another cool thing to note as well that is if I press play now you can see that we're now moving forward on this note seek but as soon as I pause we stop there and as I press play again we continue from that point. A lot of devices in VCV Rack will give you the option to add a reset point and all this will do is if I press play now and I click reset here you'll see that it goes back to the beginning and there are a number of ways that we can automatically reset it when we pause in Bitwig. You could select the start uh, information as the reset point, which means that every time you press play, you will restart it. So as soon as I press play again, we restart. But I think a smarter move is to use the stop information, which means that every time you stop Bitwig, it will reset it. So it looks a bit tidier. Play, stop, reset. So bear in mind that this stop value here works quite well as a reset. Let's now see how we can affect VCV Rack with modulators within Bitwig. Now I've got this uh, hardware instrument playing the Platts module like we had before and I've put in this simple little MIDI clip that when I press play, you can see that we're now triggering this Platts module and having the audio come back in. So let's call this Platts. Now in the note effects of this hardware instrument, we can add a MIDI CC device and we can assign as many CC values as we want here but for now let's go back to VCV and we're going to add a MIDI to CC because this is allowing us to take MIDI information sent through this IAC driver on channel 2 and then convert it into CC over here. So let's say call MIDI, no device, let's select now Bitwig to VCV, we're going to use the same one here, channel 2 and we can now take, say, CC1 and use that to control the harmonics. So if I, uh, if I were to wiggle this knob, what I can now do is over here in Bitwig, I can scroll through that. I basically have control of this, this white harmonics knob now. So let's do it with another CC value. Let's say CC2, let's take that, we'll control this morph knob. So I'm going to put that all the way down here and let's use CC2 to control that. Nice. And we don't of course have to use our hands for this. We could use modulators now and we can see these as just values. So let's take a random and let's attach that to this first CC. And you can now see that that is transferring over into um, VCV rack and modulating that harmonics knob. We could do the same thing with that morph knob as well. Nice, so we're now sending that through. Obviously these aren't necessarily smooth uh, values at times, but we're now sending that MIDI CC through. And you can select as many as you want, and if you run out here you can always just add another one. And you have plenty and plenty and plenty to choose from.
We've looked at how to send MIDI from Bitwig to VCV and how to send modulation from Bitwig to VCV, but let's now look the other way around. For me, this got really exciting when I realized that I could use all of these devices to control things in Bitwig the other way around. So what I want to do is I want to set up a way to maybe use the NoteSeq to play for us the grid. So I'm going to connect up our gate output here to the clock input and then we'll use the stop for the reset. Now we can play through here. And what I want to do is I want to use a I want to use this pattern to play this grid patch. So First of all, I need to set up a way for this to output out of VCV rack and into an IAC driver. So before we were using MIDI to CV, and now we need to use the opposite. So we're going to take CV to MIDI this time. All you have to do is select VCV to Bitwig, and I'm going to use channel 1. And now over here on this grid patch that I've got, I'm going to select on the device itself as an input rather than all ins, IAC driver VCV to Bitwig, channel 1. And now if I patch out the Volt per Octave from the note seek and the gate and we press play, we now have this playing the polygrid. Cool. And what's also quite nice about this is because we are triggering the grid as if we were playing it, i.e. we're not using any gates modules or pitches module inside it, we can in fact now make it a polyphonic grid patch and we can have a bit of tail on those notes. Really nice. Let's choose something a little higher so we're not getting notes on every single one. Really cool. And another thing to note as well is that we can send polyphonic information from VCV. So a lot of times you will see on devices that there will be a poly out or a, a, a port that either is asking to be fed a polyphonic signal or is asking to feed out one. So on those devices you can usually right click on them and go to the polyphony channels and I'm going to say give me four voices of polyphony here. And at this point, if I now drag the volt per octave back in again, you'll see that it, as soon as I let go, it forms a slightly different cable. It's a thicker cable. Let's take the gate output and put that in as well. Boom, it becomes a thick sound. So at this point, the polygrid patch, if I put this to, say, four voices, in fact, I could leave it higher and then I would have a tail on those notes. But I can now press play and you'll see that it's going to take the first four voices possible and play it as chords in the polygrid. Quite cool. Let's randomize it. Cool. So we now have that going through. What might be quite nice is to set up a way to have something in VCV rack modulate this skew knob for us. So let's keep this playing and I'm going to I'm going to remove a bunch of notes just just to get it nice and empty almost. And let's listen to that. Had a bit of delay. Nice, so we've got this pattern here, but I'd like to have something wiggle this for us. So I'm going to take my favorite module, which is the Oct, which is a collaboration between the amazing modular YouTuber uh, Ben Divkid Wilson and my favorite module company, which is Instruo. And it's just eight unsync triangle wave LFOs that you can overall change to be slower or faster. And I want to use, say, this output to wiggle this skew knob for me. So the way that we do that is, like before we had MIDI to CC, this time we're going to take CV to CC. And we're going to choose our VCV to Bitwig. Channel 1 were we on? Let's have a look. Channel 1... Yeah, cool. And we can now, if we select channel 1, send this output into, say, CC1. And in the grid patch, or wherever on the channel, we can now add the MIDI modulator. And you can see that straight away, we have that triangle wave coming through. So let's patch that back in again. And I can now use this to modulate... Oh, I patched it into the wrong one. I can now use that to modulate this skew knob. So if we press play now. 
And if I want to add more, I can just layer that down and make CC2. Let's patch this one into CC2. And we'll have that control the pitch ever so slightly. Let's do CC3 as well. Slightly faster. Let's do the fold of this one. Let's do CC4. Well folks, that's sadly all we have time for today, but I do hope that this video has been useful. I'm going to be making a bunch more videos moving forward about the holy union of VCB Rack and Bitwig, so keep your eyes peeled for some cool tips and tricks coming soon. If you did enjoy this video, then please remember to like, comment and subscribe, and click that notifications button too if you'd like to keep up to date with all of my future videos. If you'd like to take your support a step further, then please consider becoming a patron too. Your support means the world to me. In the meantime, happy Wednesday and happy creating.